First Samuel chapter 4. And the word of Samuel. All right. Chapter 3, verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. God calls Samuel. Samuel has no idea what's going on. And we close off verse 19 of chapter 3. Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let, n let, yeah, let none of his words fall to the ground. And the Lord, verse 21, appeared unto again in Shiloh, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord, and the word of Samuel came to all Israel. God is speaking to Samuel, and Samuel is speaking to the children of Israel. Something Eli's not been doing. So now there's a big change. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle. One of many battles. And the first battles were in the book of Judges with the Philistines. The enemy of uh, Samson. The battle and pitch besides Ebenezer. That's not Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer. They didn't know Ebenezer was in the Bible, did you? And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array, a line, order, against Israel. They're going to battle. And when they join battle, all right, so here's, here's one group of army, here's another group of army. They get closer and closer and closer and closer. Bam, they meet. When they joined in battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. They're losing. And they slew the army in the field, about 4,000 men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore has the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Sin. Your priests are not doing right. Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us. Now let's bring the ark. Let's get God here. That when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Uh, what happened to God? Exodus 32 5. Exodus 32 5. Now they are relying on the box to save them, not God. They didn't call upon God. Exodus 32, what did I say? 32, 5. Pages. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. It. It. Israel's got a problem with it. Hosea 8 6. Hosea 8 6, and God's going to answer him. Daniel, Hosea chapter 8, verse 6. Hosea prophet. Hosea 8 6. And Hosea 8 6, for, the, for from Israel was it. Also, the workmen made it, therefore it is not God, but the calf of Samaria was broken in pieces. Wait a minute, that it, the calves of Samaria, Jeroboam made, but when we looked at Exodus, the it was also the calf that Aaron made. So now we've made the Ark of the Covenant just as much as a calf. They become an idol. It's not God of the ark. It's the ark, our God. So if we get that ark, we will have God's presence. Idols. Idolatry. Bring it. It may save us back in 1 Samuel. You mean the box is going to save you? We'll see what happens to it, the box. So the people sent to Shiloh, that's where the ark is, that's where the tabernacle is, that they might bring forth thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord, of hosts, which dwelt between the cherubims. 
You find that Ezekiel, find uh, Revelation chapter 4. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Now, Eli did not listen to God. He said, well, how do you know Eli didn't listen to God? Chapter 2, two places. Chapter 2, verse 27. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said, Thus saith the Lord. And in verse number 34, same chapter 2, And it shall be a sign unto thee that thou shalt come upon thy two sons, on half nine Phinehas, in one day they shall die both of them. Chapter 4. Eli, we want the Ark of the Covenant. Sure. I'll have my two sons carry it for you. Uh, did you hear what God told you was going to happen? So, Eli didn't listen. In verse 5, when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. The box. The box is making them happy. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? Exodus 32 18. Exodus 32 18. Exodus 32, 18. Think that was James. It's repeating itself, hasn't it? And they said, It's not the voice of them that shout for mastery. He is the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. Joshua's like, uh, Moses, there's a battle going on down there. They're getting killed. And Moses was like, huh? I know. Don't sound like a battle to me. Sounds like uh, contemporary music to me. Things had to change. They got it. Aaron said, it is what brought us out of Egypt. Let's start partying. We got it into the battlefield. Let's start partying. And it's so loud and it's so filthy on the other side. Like, What's going on over there? What mean the noise of these great shout the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. Somehow, some way they found out. And the Philistines were afraid. For they said, God is come into the camp. There's the it. Now the Philistines who are Gentiles who have nothing to do with God, who have multiple gods, would think that box is God. The Hebrews should know better. I mean the Philistines got a God with a fish head that looks like the Pope's hat. And later on in the Bible that, that idol is going to fall down before the ark. They're going to pick it back up. It's going to fall down again. And his arms, and I think his arms and something else get cut off. And they pick it back up and they still worship the fallen God. Dagon. So it's okay for the Philistines to say this box is God. But it's not okay for the Hebrews. For they said God has come into the camp. And they said woe unto us. They got fear of God. And notice it's capital G-O-D. They are referencing themselves the God of the Hebrews. Woe unto us for they have not there for there have not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? Plural. They have no idea who the God of the Hebrews are. But he's the almighty God because he's got power to kill. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with the plagues of the wilderness. 
Well, no, it's God, Jehovah, Almighty God. He's not plural, but you got a pluralistic religion of multi gods. So this thing is God among all gods. But they know what God has done. And notice what God had done in Egypt for Israel and what God has done in the wilderness has frightened them like, oh, better not mess with this God. So you see the chastisement. You see the judgment of God does bring people to fear. And in America today, there is no fear, so there's no one getting right with God. Verse 9. Be strong. I mean, guess the God that can do wonders. <laughs> Being strong ain't going to get you anywhere. And quit yourself like men. Be strong. Don't give up. How about just repent? Oh, ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews. Now, if you lost, you became their servants, whoever the loser was. Uh, as they have been to you. So the Hebrews have lost, have been the Philistine servants. Quit yourself like men in flight. Isn't it amazing that they don't mention Samson? Why wouldn't they mention Samson here? Because Samson kicked their butt with God. He brought the house down upon all the leaders. I think it was like 4,000, 5,000 men. And he killed more in his death than he did in his lifetime. That's the same God as Samson. And it wasn't a box. But it seems to be now in chapter 4 in 1 Samuel that God is a box. Be careful of that box. And in the Catholic Church I grew up with, in the city that I grew up in New London, every year, once a year, Mary would be carried down the street and you would pin money to her. And woe be if you did anything to Mary, the statue, or any statue. And even Baptists today are afraid to, to do stuff to idolatry and idols because the Constitution, that wouldn't be right. But man, what do you read in the Bible? The kings that got right went in there and put that stuff in the garbage. Put it in the dump. Broke it, burned it, strung it upon the ground and put it in the water Moses did with those. But in America, well, we can't do that. We can't go against anybody's religion. Even though we are Bible-believing Christians, we can't do that. So... Don't cry about the mess you got. When you worship the flag more than you do the Bible. When you worship your guns before the Bible. Guns, glory, then the Bible. How can the Bible's less? So it's about that box. And they're like, oh man, you know what? How strong is that God? Oh, we better not quit, but we gotta get strong. We gotta battle. Be stronger than the Egyptians. Verse 10. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. Now, is that poor testimony? The men of God were smitten. The church today, the Laodicean church, age, is losing to the world by gaining the world. And they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000. Well, when we got the total in verse 2, 4,000, 34,000 footmen, army, soldiers. Where's your it, God? Israel, where is the God that did give me the victory in Egypt? Where is the God that gave me the victory through the wilderness? Where is the God that gave me the victory through Joshua? Let's go to the last chapter of Joshua. I'll tell you what happened. The last chapter in jo Joshua. Jo Joshua chapter 24. Verse 20. 
Joshua 24 and 20. If you forsake the Lord, guess who has? And serve strange gods. Then he will turn and do you hurt. Uh, 34,000 men dead. <laughs> and consume you. 34,000 men dead. After that, he will do. He will have done you good. And all the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Ed, witness. It's an oath. Now therefore put away, he said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice we will obey. And Joshua made a covenant, and they never put the gods away. And what have they done with God here in 1 Samuel 4? They made the ark a god. That's our power. There was power to the Hebrews long before that ark was made. When all those plagues of Egypt, there was no ark. When Pharaoh drowned in the Red Sea, and that sea opened up and dried the ground for them to go across, there was no ark. That ark didn't, the, the blueprints came out in Exodus 20. At the close of Exodus is the ark. In verse 11, of 1 Samuel 4, And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas were slain, according to the prophecy. Not only was his two sons slain, not only was Eli doing a terrible job as the high priest, where's your ark of God now? It's in enemy hands. Good job, Eli. You lost the ark. You lost your sons. And we're not done yet. Don't play around with sin. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army. Remember Benjamin? Remember that big battle they had in the last few chapters of Judges? Because they wanted to protect the Sodomites and they were almost wiped out. Here comes a Benjamin out of the army. And came to Shiloh the same day with his coals rent and with earth upon his head. They're repentant. They're, they're saddened. There's distress. There's trouble. There's problems. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside. What? This guy's sitting and he's lying down. On the wayside. He's not in the way, he's on the side of the way. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse number 4. And it came to pass as he sold, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Now verse 15, the answer to what the parable is. And these are they by the wayside, when the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown out of their hearts. You got unfruitful ground in the wayside. You got Satan hanging out in the wayside. Be warned. And here he sits on the wayside watching. Should he be at the tabernacle praying? Or is, it, or is the ark his God too and it's gone? For his heart trembled for the ark of God. And why'd you let it go? And by the way, it said by Eli, uh, Hophni and Phinehas, well, they were this, the high priest sons. The ones that were supposed to carry the ark was to be, as soon as I said that, now the family went out. Starts with an M. The other sons of Levi. Uh, it starts with an M. I can't think of the name now. 
There was one specific family that was supposed to carry that ark, and it was not the high priest and his sons. There's Meribah. Oh, I can't think. So let's move on. So his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying of the city of the crying, that's the first time crying shows up. And it has reference to that ark is gone. God didn't go anywhere. He's just not in your fellowship because you're sinning. He said, what meaneth the, the noise of the tumult? What's going on? Boy, they're going from shouting and, and victory to crying. And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now, Eli was 98 years old. He's an old man. That's about the same age that Abraham conceived with uh, Isaac. And his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today of the army. <laughs> I'm on retreat. I'm AWOL. And he said, What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines. They're losing. And there have been also a great slaughter among the people. Forty, I mean, excuse me, 30,000. And that two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. <laughs> Total loss. And it came to pass when he had made mention of the ark of God. That he fell from off the seat backward. By the side of the gate. And his neck break. And he died. Instant death. He fell over. Instant death. And he was, now watch what God has to say but at the end of his death. Watch this. This is what God has to say. For he was an old man, already heard death, and heavy. <laughs> we already read that. Man, he is just living high on the cow. And he judged Israel. So we are still in the time of judges. And look at the condition Israel's in. See, the book of Judges didn't end. Eli was a judge, and a terrible one at that. Samuel's going to be a judge, a good one. And he judged Israel 40 years. We're not done. And his daughter-in-law, Finna has wife. Well, it's kind of interesting because it said over here that his sons were taking the women of the temple and having relations with them. He's married with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, that's not like the book of Ruth. The men are dead. She bowed herself and travailed. It brought on the pregnancy. It's not going full term. For her pains came upon her. And distress and trouble will do that to some pregnant women. And about the time of her death, like Rachel, Rachel died in childbearing. To Benjamin, verse 12, And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her, uh, I can't think of what you call it, the nurse, midwife. midwife, said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel. Ichabod means the glory has departed. 
I can put that as sign on many churches. Because the ark of God was taken. No central theme where God is. And because her father-in-law, Eli, the priest, high priest, is dead. And for her husband. They're dead. Now, according to the law, do you know somebody who would be happy right now? At Eli's death? Anybody who has been put into the city of the refuge. Because they had to stay there into the death line. Eli's dead. All right, I can go home now. He lived a long time. He lived 90, 99 years. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel. For the ark of God is taken. So, I don't know what time of the year this thing is. If it would be to the time of the Day of Atonement... You got a problem. Where do you put the blood? And we're going to study a little bit further. We're going to see a possible another problem that's going to arise with this ark. We'll talk about it in another chapter, but it's just all messed up. Eli's fault. 